Good morning, tubers. Madam Roy back once again. Back to you on Saturday. I believe this is the 28th of April, 2018. And I am out going to garage sales. Yep, you guys know my routine by now on Saturdays. I've been to a few of them. Um, nothing major. I got a monitor. Um, a couple of other little small odds and ends. But something came up uh, a few times today. I wanted to uh, to reiterate this. For those of you that are going to garage sales, and I've heard this at least three times today, the worst thing that can happen is when you're looking at an item, doesn't matter what it is, and you ask the price, and the next thing out of their mouth is, well, they're selling for this online. That, sh that should be your cue to just walk away. Um, I heard that three times. That all had to do with video games. Um, I was looking at, uh, in this case, they were all Xbox 360s. Uh, one was the newer model, um, the, the black one. I don't know the proper name of it. I'm not really much of a video gamer myself. And then the other one was the um, the older model, the the original one, the the one that's got the, the white face on it, the large one. The second, the first one was the slimline one. The other one was the original uh, one, but. Either way you look at it, the worst thing you can hear is, once again, well, they're selling for this online because that means they're not just looking to get rid of it. They're looking, they've done their research, they know what it's worth, and you're not going to get any deals. And unfortunately, that's happened to me three times today. And it does it does usually happen with video game items. You know, people, I, people get passionate from what I see about video games, and they'll be like, well, you know, I paid so much in, in the beginning, now I think it's still worth that. What people don't realize is these are garage sales. Whoever is going to a garage sale is looking for a deal. You're not going to get full-blown retail for any items that you sell at a garage sale. And unfortunately, that's what these people were looking for. Uh, in the case of the last one, this guy had maybe four or five uh, Xbox 360 games. They were the Halo games, and so they were pretty decent games, and they were in good shape. He had the... Um, he had the controllers and all the wires, and that was about it. And he's like, "Well, they're selling for a hundred on on, e on online, so I'm looking to get sixty for it." And I felt like saying, "You know what, dude? It's not going to happen at a garage sale. Somebody has to really, really, really want that." And chances are, you're not going to find that person. So, if you guys are doing a garage sale or going to a garage sale, you know don't realize you're not going to get the most out of your products you know you're not going to get full-blown retail of what they're worth and another thing was the last guy that I was talking to he I heard them I heard him mention to his uh, I guess was his sister or somebody one of the family members he said oh well we tried selling this on let go and offer up well, there you go. You could tell right then and there that they're trying to get a decent amount of money for it. But that's just my kind of two cents about garage sales, kind of give you an idea of, you know, what to avoid. And even if you don't know what the prices are, if they actually say that to you, chances are whatever price they're quoting you is more than you should actually be paying. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pause this vlog. I'll be honest with you, the garage sales today have not been that great. I've been to the two community sales that were going on in my area. And there really just have not been that many houses participating. So let me pause this vlog. I'll pick it up when I get home. And hopefully I'll have some more garage shell finds for you guys to see. Talk to you later. All right. So you guys are getting a treat. We're going to uh, ride this old elevator down. That is so cool. Look at those buttons. So you have to manually operate this? Yes. Oh, my goodness. And the, the doors are... Or a little finicky, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, it should be up in it's just a moment. Oh, okay. So. Oh, you can see the light when it's in use. Yes. That is so cool. It's amazing that you have to have an uh, elevator operator nowadays, <laughs> right? I remember when we had elevator operators. Sad, but true. That is just so cool. Yes, he's coming down. He's gonna, and he's videoing it. Oh, he's videoing it. Oh, it's wow. so oh, unusual. I had to see this thing. Oh, my <laughs> I'm going to let you do it from inside. Hold on. Let's see? Oh, my goodness. And look at this. No inner doors. <laughs> and you'll be going out on this side. 
Yeah, isn't that unusual? Yes, yeah, she said the doors are kind of a little finicky sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, they are sometimes. Oh, wow, look at that. Well, thank you very much. My, uh, well, you my audience will appreciate that. Oh, what audience is this? Oh, my YouTube audience. They've always wanted to see these elevators, oh, really? and it's so unusual. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for coming back. You're welcome. Hey, tubers, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little quick elevator video. I um, wish I could have gotten a trip up, but there are people waiting to use it. But that thing was just so unusual. You don't find a lot of those elevators in this area. Uh, at least ones that I can access. From what I could gather, it was uh, originally installed in the late 60s, early 70s. Nobody knew what it was, you know, no brand. There wasn't anything listed on there. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to tell you exactly what it is. But isn't that interesting? Uh, I believe it was hydraulic. And the two doors, there were no inner doors. One opened on one end and one opened on the other. Basically, what it was, it was installed to uh, service the fellowship hall upstairs. So basically people, you know, senior citizens could um, go upstairs, the ones that couldn't make it up the stairs, literally. And from what they're telling me, it was actually purchased and um, I guess installed by a, a generous benefactor of the church. So got a little elevator for you guys. I have a few more garage shell finds, nothing crazy big, but we'll go ahead and do those and I'll incorporate them into the vlog today. And I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers, I'm back home and gonna do some garage shell finds here for you. Do it a little differently today. Um, go ahead and start off with a monitor. This is a Soyo 20 inch LCD monitor that I picked up at a garage shell. Got this one for $5. Uh, this is a glossy screen, just like the HP right here. In very good shape. I've never really been a big fan of Soyo monitors, but uh, this one seems to be really nice. Got a very, very nice sharp picture. Trying to get to the native resolution is 1680 by 1050. So not full HD, but not regular. It's like right in between 720p and 1080p. Um, Soyo is kind of a cheaper brand, but it's a decent monitor. You can see 20 inch widescreen LED. This is model number MT-NI. Oh my gosh, look at that number there. DYLM20E6, manufactured in May of 2008, has DVI and VGA, so yeah, not a bad little monitor for $5. I'm going to bring you guys over here, show you a couple other monitors. These I actually got from a uh, local thrift store. This is a HP uh, model W1907. This is a 19-inch monitor. Uh, admittedly very dirty at the moment, but no scratches on the screen. This is just, you know, dirt. Paid $7 for this one at, at a thrift store. This is a combination of garage sale finds and thrift store finds. This one also has VGA and DVI. Manufacture date there is June of 2008, so from right around the same time. Next, for $15, I got this Acer. This is Acer model number... S202HL, this is a 20 inch LED monitor. That's why I kind of paid up a little bit for it. A lot of people are wanting LED monitors now and they still bring a premium at the thrift stores, but I'll also get a premium in the long run. So that's all I have for right now. I'm gonna have to empty the car out and I'll show you the rest of my thrift store finds in all just right, a moment. All right, tubers, I'm gonna make myself comfortable here. I've been on my feet all morning. So the next thing I picked up is this 200 pack of 32 speed blank CDRs. Got this for $3 at a church rummage sale. I can open this up. You will see that they have not indeed not been opened. These don't actually come with the spindles. These are the ones that you actually put in your spindles when you exhaust the ones you already have in there. Not sure of the quality. I think these are K Hypermedia. So they're eh, medium quality, but they look like they're in good shape. They don't smell musty or anything, so these were definitely stored in a uh, cool, dry environment. So chances are these will still be good. But for $3, I really did not mind taking the risk. See on the bottom here, it does not actually say too much. Let's see if we can get anything here. Value disc. Well, these are obviously cheaper discs, but you know what? For $3, again, I'm not going to complain. Next, in my little goodie bag here, for the paltry sum of 50 cents, I got this br 
what is see how they pronounce that Bree Breville uh, key cup holder. And um, I didn't really need one, but I saw it for 50 cents, and I said, you know what? I can't really pass it up for that price. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. The whole 30 K-cups, 15 on each side. This nice kind of brushed aluminum for 50 cents. Again, definitely can't beat that. Next in my little goodie bag here, got a bunch of different CDs. We got Mannheim Steamroller, The Christmas Angel, A Family Story. As told by Olivia Newton-John and Chip Davis, uh, the lady I got these from really took care of her CDs. You guys can pause the video if you want to read the uh, songs on there. But I'll pull that out really quick. You can see the CDs are pretty much like new. There is not a scratch on these discs. So I'll go through those really quick for you. Next, I got Ann Murray duets. I really like Ann Murray's music. I'm, I'm I'm a lover of almost all types of music, and uh, I haven't listened to Ann Murray in a long time. And you see, you got some duets here with Jan Arden, Isabel Bow Bowle, Sarah Brightman, Celtic Women, Celine Dion, Amy Grant, just to name a few. Next, I have Kenny G. Classics in the key of G. Very good, uh, mellow, kind of jazzy music. I like to sleep to this kind of music. Again, you can pause the video if you want to read those songs. 1999, actually, surprised I would have thought older on that album. And one of my favorite albums, as a matter of fact, I've been listening to this in the car, and I did not have this one, uh, James Taylor's Live. This is a two-disc album, as you can see. First disc there, and I haven't even looked at the booklet yet. Uh, I'll, I'll have to look at that later. I can't pull that out one-handed, but one disc there. And the other disc is on the other side right there. You guys can uh, take a look at the songs there. A lot of good ones here. Even though it's a live album, I'm not usually that crazy about live albums. It was done very well. A lot of the songs sound as good, if not even a little bit better, than their original counterparts. All right, next, a couple items I got for free. My good friend Andrew, uh, when I went to one of the local thrift stores he works there, he gave me this Sonic Visions, kind of like a um, Nintendo, Pow was it Nintendo Power Play, but the Sega version. This is a magazine from November, December of 1992, which I'm not going to go go over right now because I want to de um, dedicate a specific video to this in the future. So you guys will have to kind of wait to see more of that particular magazine. Next, for free, I picked up some of these e-machine speakers. And the reason they were free is you can see one of them is actually missing the stand. And they're not really powered. But I figured for testing purposes, they would be okay. And once again, you cannot beat free. And last but not least in the bag... They had two of these at the garage sale for $3. I picked up, let's see what brand this is. This is a Niagara Power Shower Nozzle. Basically, it's one of those uh, massaging ones where you can kind of turn the uh, head here and it goes up and down to give you different strengths, so spray strengths. And I gave a whopping $3 for that. So that's all I have for right now. I do have a few more garage sale finds in the car. So let me go ahead and pause this video. And I'll talk to you guys in a few all more right, minutes. Tubers. And here are the last two items I picked up. I was actually able to get both of these in my arms and bring them in. I know the fitness training I'm doing is sure working. Now, on the surface, these look like some mediocre e-machines towers. And they are, but there is something special, at least, in one of these. And the reason I'm doing this section is, don't ever judge a book by its cover, even when it comes to computers. This particular one here is one I got from a garage sale. I gave the lady $5 for it. I felt bad because she had actually... Uh, taking the trouble to have her husband go up in the attic and fetch it. So I kind of felt obligated to purchase this particular one. This one is really nothing special. It's um, a basic e-machines tower. It's got a Vista sticker on it back there. Very typical ports. It does have a wireless card added. So somebody did spend a little bit of time and money upgrading this system. Go ahead and pull the side off here. Um, I can tell that somebody did replace the 
uh, hard drives at least because originally I believe this would have had a SATA hard drive whereas you can see somebody's actually utilizing the IDE port and they have two IDE hard drives in there and they did upgrade the memory stick actually let's pull these out real quick I'm going to try to see what what kind of memory this is we have okay okay well that's not bad we have two sticks of Kingston half height um, DDR2 looks like 533 2 gigabytes I hopefully the other one's the same and it is okay so that's not bad so I got a f two, two two gig sticks of Kingston memory plus whatever these hard drives are I'm not going to be using this system. I don't know what the processor is, but it's probably something like a Celeron D, maybe an AMD Sempron. And there are a few caps on the motherboard that are, it's not going to come out for you guys to notice it, but there are a few caps on the motherboard that are questionable. So this is actually going to be stripped for parts. This will definitely be utilized in another system. I'm very surprised that I actually had the four, full four gigs of memory in there, which is what these systems maxed out at. So that's a good deal for $5. I have the memory and, you know, a few extra hard drives. So I'm going to put this one to the side and open up this system because I want to show you something very special that is inside this computer. All right, tubers. In the interest of full disclosure, this particular e-machines did come from the thrift store, not a garage sale. And looking in front, you can see this is the basic of the basic. This is an e-machine model... T3612 with a Celeron D processor. Um, what is that? 100, 512 megabytes of memory and 120 gigabyte hard drive. So, again, from the factory, this particular tower was nothing to write home about. And I saw the price on it and I said, okay, 698. You know, I'll probably pass just because of what it is until I turned it to the back. Now, if you look in the back here and you go down, you can see this four port uh, USB card. I believe it's just a USB 2.0 card, but what that told me was that somebody put the time and effort to at least upgrade this computer. And I also noticed that the computer weighed a little bit more than it should have. So, while I was there, I loosened the thumb screws, opened this up, and I looked inside. I said, okay, you know, we got some RAM sticks in there. I haven't even pulled the memory out because that really wasn't what I was interested in. I saw the USB card there, and then I looked at the hard drive. I don't know if you guys can make that out or not, but that is a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black drive. And I said, okay, instantly this computer has become worth the $7 asking price. And that's why I wanted to let you guys know, when you guys are in these thrift stores looking at computers, I'm going to say it one more time, don't judge a book by its cover because the computer might look like this, a really old, cheap Celeron tower that looks like it should belong in the dump, as this one should. But people can always hide good components inside. It amazes me all the time how people upgrade these old turds of computers with really, really good and semi-modern um, components. Give you an example. That Western Digital Caviar Black 1 terabyte hard drive, if I was to buy that used on eBay, I would have to pay almost $30 for that hard drive, and that would be on a good day. While I'm in here, let's go ahead and pull some of this memory out. I really want to see exactly what this RAM is, if it's been upgraded. And I can guarantee you that it has. Take a look at that. We have a one gigabyte stick of Nanya memory. I've heard of that. They're, they're okay. Not my favorite brand. Let's see what the other one is, if it's the matching stick. And it is. So right off the bat here, a computer I paid $7.30 something cents for after tax. I have two sticks of one gigabyte DDR2. Uh, this is worth about $10 to me. And then I also have that one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black Drive, again, worth about $30. So I have $40 worth of parts right there out of this computer that I only paid $7 for. And I haven't even gotten inside to look at the um, USB card. Actually, let's go ahead and pull that out real quick because there are no uh, screws here. Kind of a screwless design. Hopefully it'll let me... Uh, pull it out here. 
not easy to do one-handed. There we go. And this is a Via Technologies VT6212L. Yes, this is a USB 2.0 um, expansion card. Value on this, I would put between five and ten dollars. So right there, tubers, it's about sixty dollars worth of parts. I'm gonna end the video for here today, the vlog slash garage sale finds. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please continue to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.